Hi, Dale. Hello, how are you? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> this is a weekend I am not looking forward to at all, as you can probably guess. And um, once it's over with, I'll feel much better, I think. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people are just stressed about it. It's going to be, uh, yeah, t t tough to manage, might be a really long day. Yeah, it could be a very long day. Did you get, I sent you an email just a short time ago. Um, I have been in meetings since 1.30 uh, okay. today. Yeah, right. so. It was a simple request. Um, and st since Steve is here, could we have a, a, maybe we're planning on doing this anyway, a discussion about the um, the rate reduction of both timing and amount. I'm quite yes, getting quite, we'll cover cons it. quite concerned about this. Yep. Yep, it's on our agenda for tonight, so we'll we'll uh, decide on that. Terrific. Meanwhile, the garden grows. <laughs> I, I, I didn't plant you any tomato, any any grape sized tomatoes this year. At least uh, in my uh, Bob Groves and I, uh, he, Bob went for a uh, host wholesale arrangement at Harvest Farms, and you know, oh. Waitley. Well, you know, the you know, you buy a six pack of seedlings is depending on where you go, it's pretty pricey. And um, so we're trying to dig into the wholesale situation to uh, bring the plantings down. But I picked up my tomato plants today, but a grape, grape tomatoes are not a part of it, I'm afraid. But, oh, well, it's, it, it's all right. There's so many <laughs> great local farm stands and things around here. Yeah. I'm sure I will not be um, uh, wanting Repro when oh. August and September rolls around. Uh-huh. Well, I talked to Graham earlier today. I know he's coming. Uh, I stopped by his place yesterday and I think we discussed many things, including those um, lovely new nine uh, phone uh, national grid polls that were put in. <laughs> did he tell you that, did he tell you that you know, national grid has put in, you know, high voltage the whole whole works up to up to graham's neighbor's construction site and with the nine poles and 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 the electrician is unable to get this is how yep. he did a meter yep, four, box four, four, meter box 40 weeks 40 weeks 40, 40, 40 weeks can you imagine that oh we're we're economically we're <laughs> deep doo-doo <laughs> if you can't get a meter box in that amount of, uh, well, it's a good time not to be um, doing construction, <clears throat> including a certain project that the Shrewsbury Library folks have in mind. But anyway, I won't, I won't get into that. No, no, we'll yeah, say, say that for Saturday. Say <laughs> yeah, that for right. the library Jim, free zone. <laughs> Jim, I, Jim, I did want to ask you, I saw there was a, um, I got an email from Becky about this uh, meeting last night to cons uh, answer questions about the budget. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, gee, should I be there if there's a question about the MLP budget? But I wasn't, so I didn't. Well, it, it, it was worth missing. Um, it, you know, it's sort of a, I won't go into the details, but um, uh, n nothing regarding um, uh, the broadband committee or anything remotely connected to it came up. Good. And, and if so, I, I was there. And, and if so, I, I would have been there to answer those questions. So I, I figured both. Was was true, so I yeah. wasn't concerned about yeah, yeah, it. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Don't lose any sleep over that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Both uh, what? Hello, everyone. Both what were true? Both what? Both, oh. both were true. Both? Did, did uh, Steve? Did you say both were true? True? No. Yeah, there, there was a uh, meeting with the FinCom and the Select Board last night online that people could ask questions about the budget, yeah. and I. The Warren articles, and I thought, well, gee, should I should I be there online in case there was a question about the MLP budget uh, Warren articles? But I wasn't, and you know, Jim said yeah. didn't matter. There was nothing about that, and, and would have been there to answer them anyway. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, got yeah. it. All right, um, we have a fairly large agenda tonight, so let's. Um, 
let's dive right in. Um, all right, we need to approve the previous meeting minutes from April 20th. Can I have a motion? Motion to approve. Is it April 20th or 27th? Um, I thought it was the 20th. That's the third. Oh, you know what? We moved it because I yeah, was traveling then. Yeah. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. It's 27th. My bad. Okay. That's, that's I'm, the, uh, I'm in my motion. <laughs> okay. And, and it's uh, meeting, uh, uh, minutes as amended because we did make some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I plugged in all of your revisions about a week or so ago, which is what I usually do. I usually wait until everybody comments and then and then sort of crank out a finished draft. Yeah, which, I, I got which that. You have read. Jim, thank, okay. thank you. Great. All in favor of accepting the minutes from the 27th as amended? Aye. Aye. Great. All right. Speaking, uh, speaking mm -hmm. of minutes, and we have Craig on board now. Uh, Craig had questioned whether we should have in the minutes the, uh, in the uh, financial report that I, uh, the um, the, the current balance that I report each month. And so I thought, you know, maybe we should just have a brief discussion about that. Um, so, I would say that um, I'm making, this is a report in a public meeting that's being recorded. Uh, it seems if, if I'm giving that figure out, it, it should be in the minutes. Uh, um. Yeah, I'm, I'm one who doesn't believe everything has to be in the minutes, but my only concern is that some person, I don't know whom, will, will look and say, they have a balance of $20,000, you know, why don't they reduce our rates? Or, or more than that, sometimes our balance, how, how high do our balances get sometimes? Like a hundred, yeah. yeah, 120 yeah, so, something. Yeah. yeah, right, but it's right before we have to make a $100,000 debt payment, so. Right, right. Uh, yeah, so we could easily offer if, if anybody did question that, we can offer an explanation. Um, so maybe every time it's in the minutes, it should say a balance of X to be applied against amount due on day Y of X. You know what I I'm think saying? Sometimes I have mentioned oh, things mm -hmm. like yeah. that, but then it's like, well, how much detail? Well, it tells in the minutes. It um, tells them, yes, this is a big number, but it's being applied to an even bigger number. And so, no, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I, I have sometimes mentioned that it's really building up, but that we've got this big. For sure. So. Yeah, I mean, we all understand. That, yeah. that's, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about somebody um, reading one set of minutes and taking things out of context. That's my biggest concern with any of this, is people taking things out of context and, and starting a, a next door battle. But yeah. by the same token, we don't, as, as you've said, Craig, we don't want go into a whole lot of detail in the minutes either. I do understand. So I do it's, we're striking a balance. So my view is either we, either you don't mention the balance or you mention the balance and the debt that's that's coming up, but but not half. That, that's my suggestion. Yeah. Um, I, I feel pretty neutral on this one. We have not to date had anyone go back and look at our minutes and read them and question anything. I Ooh. think that, you know, that, that we have a pretty good, um, uh, no one's watching us closely because they trust us um, at, at this point. Um, uh, I'm, I'd, I'd be glad to defer to Jim on this one to make the choice about whether or not to add a parenthesis in there about to be applied to future debt or, um in in our retained earnings or not um and i feel and if that doesn't happen i feel confident we can shut down any kind of next door firestorm that happens right um right. yeah I've, I've just been i've just been uh watching and being involved in some of the next door firestorms and they are yeah just, yes I, I understand that sensitivity very much they are simply ridiculous and they will grab onto the smallest thing and turn it into yeah. 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 I think, I think we're largely sheltered because we're not controversial yeah. and, you know, and, and people are happy if that changes, we perhaps should look at our minutes more closely if they should start to get scrutinized. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, hut report, Graham, 
you had yeah. a nice hot visit today. Yes, I did indeed. Um, in fact, today, uh, Lee Masters, the, um, the network engineer for Shelled, came and um, and gave me all of our routers, uh, our Gigaspy routers, which uh, which I um, uh, which uh, which will be available on um, on Saturday. If if you want to see me, I'll just hand it to you, and uh, it's got your name and it's got your address. Now your names on them. So uh, uh, because each one of them he has assigned, a, you know, they've got MAC addresses, and he's kind of got each one labeled. Uh, and um, the hut was in good shape. Um, um, I uh, I showed him, you know, what a lovely hut it was. He thought it was a lovely hut. Uh, so that was good. Um, he uh, he was looking at our spares, and I told him that um, Crocker has some in storage as well, and uh, and that we keep a, a track, um, you know, an approximate track of of uh, of stuff. And uh, and I pointed to the uh, to the box outside for drops and drop repair, and I noticed the lock looked a little odd. Um, it wasn't it wasn't pushed in. It wasn't recessed as normal. And and I found that whoever uh, whoever the last contractor who uh, who had used a drop or whatever um, uh, had uh, had inadvertently left it unlocked. So oh no! It doesn't oh no. have it doesn't have great value to a lot of people, but one wouldn't want to leave the box unlocked. So um, so anyhow, I, I I opened it up and showed um, uh, Lee Masters our. Um, our drop spares and you know he saw that was good you know the box is still fairly full so that you know it didn't get emptied in um yeah and uh um and we noticed that there were wasps in the lid so i might put a sign um uh, so we still had security i suppose you know if you'd uh, <laughs> but, uh, wasps. but yeah but not much security yeah so uh they didn't sting us so um so uh, you know, what are they? Hornets, white faced hornets. They don't, they're not that aggressive, but um, so I will. <laughs> what? Uh, Great. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, they're it's terrible. Not, <laughs> they're the worst. On, <laughs> they're uh, worst. Yeah, so, depends on your, uh, you know, so your experience. But anyhow, I'll, um, I'll put a sign on the thing. Um, and I check the, um, the gas or the propane and it's around 70%, which it always seems to be. So, yeah, we don't use much, I guess, in reserve and, uh, Maybe it runs the stove in the in the. Is that for the stove in the town hall? It's just the general. Well, it 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 it, no, it, it know is. that. Oh, it's yeah. for their generator too. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two generators exercising on it. Yeah. it doesn't go down very fast, yes. So. And the stove in the uh, in, in the town hall is electric. Oh, okay, all right. So there, there there isn't much of a load, and it goes down very slowly. Um, so uh, there's our hut um, looking good, and. Um, and I got trained on um, by a, a real pro on on um, heat pump uh, uh, maintenance, and it's exactly like what I thought. Clean a single. It just happened that I got the whole house air 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 uh, air, uh, air based heat pump uh, for this house, and uh, and so um, he uh, trained me on the annual well um, the. Uh, how often you should do it i should do it more often in the hut so i will clean the screens in the in the air handling unit so well, uh, thank you do you want to do you want a promotion with that new expertise the new yeah, certification yeah, that's you got? I, think, I think absolutely you should call me something else now so. our hvac specialist <laughs> yeah okay that, that'll be good i'll, I'll get I'll, okay. I'll wear a little and black an uh, extra gold star for yeah, graham yeah mm -hmm. extra gold star and i'll skip ahead to the uh the the, uh, so, so uh, Graham, so, yeah, so Lee yeah. Masters was happy with what he saw. Oh yeah, yeah, he was very. He thought it was a pretty neat looking hut, you know. Okay. He's a very operational sort of a, a guy. He worked, he worked for um, Comcast. Uh, he he uh, he 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 got his training with Comcast sort of networky stuff. So, uh, uh, but he's you know got computer sciencey background as well so he's he's oh. got he's he's got this nice balance that i like of both practical out in the field and theoretical you know um and so um yeah. yeah so uh there were 25 help tickets this month and um a f uh, you know a few of them were just administrative tasks uh i i can't remember why uh on the 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 27th of um, april april um and the 28th of april there were six outages of the internet can, can it's it was the power outage i'll talk about it in a little bit okay all right yeah so um and um and there was not much else to um remark 
um, you know, a couple of cancellations, a couple of turn-ons, uh, so administrative tasks, and uh, and then a few voicemail questions, and you know, all the, all the normal things. So, twenty-five help tickets in a month. That's kind of a very average month. There were eight drops repaired by the fourth uh, of um, March, uh, which was about the same as uh, last year. Um, eight uh, drops. So uh, yeah, eight drops. And, and just total, March. total, not, not yeah, March. sorry, total, 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 yeah, total, yeah, yeah. yeah. To total by the, the, the beginning of March, um, they're always a little behind on that, but that's about what we had, you know, by March then, and there were six new installs, um, or install requests by last month, so, um, that's also kind of comparable to, uh, the new installations from previous years, and, uh, uh, and uh, nothing else too uh, astounding to talk about from the, the, that aspect, um, unless Gail, you got well. Yeah, you, Gail, you had the uh, the twenty eighth of uh, April. What the a power outage did say? Yeah, I'll talk about it in a sec. Steve, did you have a question for Graham? Yeah, Graham, I just wanted to ask, what's what is Lee Masters' um, position or title again? He's called network mm -hmm. engineer, and he um, so. Um, so yeah, not an operations manager, but network engineer. So network engineer for Shell. Yes, yes. So okay. so uh, and um, uh, oh, and the really wonderful thing, uh, the totally enjoyable thing was he. Uh, uh, we went into the town hall. He sat down, and uh, and he showed me. He he just showed me all the things that he can do, and they Shell can do, and Netegrity can do when Shell has gone home for the night of looking at, you've got a problem. This is everything happening in your home. This is how it was happening. This is, so it was really like, you know, uh, it, it's, it's pretty darn slick and they only have to fix to the ONT as we know um, on our contract um, in, in, Had, in South Hadley and, and their, their customers, they, they fix all the way to the router because they've got managed routers um, and we can talk about that later too mm -hmm. um but it adds a dollar 50 a month now for a managed router cloud managed sort of um service so uh so let's oh. let's it's not much let's talk about that when in yeah. the right order the 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 eight um uh drop repairs was from when to when uh the there were eight drop repairs by the 4th of march but uh, like i said that was Comparable to other years, and beginning from when? Oh, from the beginning of the year. So this okay. is uh, this is, but, but I wouldn't put it in the minutes. It's just it's just kind of operational. Who -ha maybe just put r repairs um, on track know, on, on track with same as same as last average, year. No no increase in repair year. average. There you go. Average yeah. repair quantity. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. It, it, I I only look for trends. Yeah, I don't worry okay. about. Yeah. It. The particulars. No. All right, so we're to the financial report. Steve, why don't you give your spiel and then we'll talk about um, setting MLP rates. Okay, well, um, the uh, current current balances, uh, but I will say on the current balances also, this is my calculation from my spreadsheet. Um, this is not the figure you would get from the, the town accountant. She's working from the town meeting appropriation. What I'm looking at is an actual revenue and what we've paid in actual expenses. Um, and so we have a balance of 51,519. What was that again, Steve? Sorry. Uh, 51,519. Otherwise, on financial, you know, the money, I, I, I bill Crocker, the money comes in from Crocker, I pay the bills. Um, it's all pretty straightforward. Gail and I will be meeting um, next month to plan, uh, in addition to the big transition, what I call the grand transition to Shell, there's also the petite transition of um, my handling the finances to uh, Gail handling the finances. So we're going to meet next month to... Uh, um, work on that. 
Yep. Figure out that, that process. Um, so town meeting is on Saturday, as everybody knows, and, um, uh, what I'd like to do in advance of that, um, if we can, is to set our final, um, MLP fee, uh, for our subscribers, um, for the next fiscal year. Now, Steve sent around um, in advance those great budgetary spreadsheets. Um, and um, at our last, the last time we talked about this, um, we kind of agreed, well, it could be, it could be $38 a month um, for, for that and still keep a really healthy reserve, keep building that and meet all of our um, operations obligations. So, um, one thing I would like to propose is that we do, instead of doing a $38 a month MLP fee, we do 40. It's a nice even number and the, wait, here's the, re, here's the reason why, is because we are looking at doing managed routers in the future. And that's gonna be at, at least $1.50 per subscriber. And, um, talking to Shell, they said that, you know, Calix does not raise their expenses very much. So they're expecting that to hover around $1.50, but um, I want to build that in because I don't want to lower rates now. And then in about three years, when we um, uh, go to, or not even less than that, if we start, you know, letting customers get these new U6 routers, I think that we're going to probably head that way, that there's going to be a new monthly expense um, with them. And I don't want to lower rates now just to raise them um, in the near future. I'm Steve's making a face at me. What are you thinking, Steve? No, <laughs> why not? I mean, yeah, a lot of rates go up. Mm -hmm. And so if, you know, a new expense, comes into the managed router, we raise the rates then. But right now, we don't need this money. And the, the, the fact that 30, 40 is a round figure doesn't matter to me. I wouldn't see as really uh, relevant here because customers not charged that rate. It's, it's, it's rolled into the um, total customer fee. We don't break out the amount of the MLP fee. Um, but in addition, there is significant cushion in our budget, even at the $38 rate. One thing we're talking about not instituting the reduction until Feld comes on board, which is a month, there's a month delay there. So we're going to go the first month of the new fiscal year. Set my understanding was our plan was to go for the first month, July, um, at the $52 rate. And Crocker will be billing that uh, early in June for bill due July 1st. That uh, gives us over, 10, that's over $10,000 um, that is additional revenue that we're not actually accounting for in the budget. Um, the revenues based, our total revenues based on, on the, the current um, spreadsheet we have on 760 customers. We're running 769 customers now. We've been over 760 for about a year. We were at 78 mm -hmm. a while ago. There's another $1,500 in revenue. Um, several of the expenses we have in there, we've never had to pay. Um, but I leave it in the budget for the, the idea we might have to pay it. So I, I just, I don't see the need for, uh, for doing this. Mm -hmm. For, um, for, for uh, having a, a, I don't see the need for having a user fee higher than $38. All right. So Jim just got his hand up. Yeah. Uh, you go ahead, Jim, and then I'll talk. 
Okay, well, I'm, uh, I'm not in favor of 38 and I, I'm, I even think 40 is, is uh, a little bit on the low side. I would go with maybe a $10 reduction. And for, for two reasons, first of all, and I, I would delay the putting the reduction into effect until mid fall, you know, two or three months. Let's see how Shell works out. We, 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 there's so much, there's so many changes that are about to take place. And uh, let's, it's, you know, to throw this into the works as well, I think is just in, in inviting trouble. I think we ought to, I, I think we ought to delay it until the fall. And the second thing is, in the macroeconomic picture, we are headed into real trouble nationwide and, and, per, and probably even lo locally as well uh, with the high interest rates and the uh, inflation rate over 8% and, and a looming recession. And I, it, I don't know if you watch what happened to the stock market today, it was down over 1200, it was 1200 points. We are, we are really heading into recession territory and there's gonna be a lot of economic pain going around. And that may mean that people will stop paying their bills and, and that there, it could be a disruption to the money that is coming into us, um, uh, you know, from, you know, from, uh, you know, from our subscribers. I, I think we ought to be conservative about this. Anyway, that's my opinion. Yeah. I, I to me, lowering our rates is the best way to keep our um, subscriber base up. Uh, you know, having to, having to cut something mm. that uh, a, a lower bill is going to be less incentive than uh, cutting a higher bill. Well, there may be people who just stop paying altogether. I, it's it's really hard to predict what is going to happen. I, I just I, I think with the economic uncertainty plus the fact that we're in the middle of a transition, it, this is just not a, a good time to throw that into the mix. I, I don't think we want to start predicting macroeconomic crises. That's not our job. I, I think predicting that a whole bunch of Shootsbury customers are going to stop paying their bills is well, I didn't. I didn't. Craig, I didn't predict that. I'm just. I'm just okay. warning you about uh, about about trouble. Predicting trouble time is coming. Predicting that a significant number two is wild speculation, and uh, and I don't think we should be. Uh, yeah. Okay, Graham. Yeah, um, Jim. I agree. Things shit might hit fans. Sorry to say that on a, a recorded meeting. Uh, yeah. But but I, I think uh, I agree with Craig that, that we can't be expected to anticipate that. And, uh, and if we have to do crisis management when a crisis happens, then it's, it's you know, it's, it's just like a storm. You know, I mean, we've got our stuff out there on poles, you know. So I think we just have to take our chances on that. Um, mm -hmm. The wonderful thing about our three-year contract is it's a three-year fixed prices contract for most of our services, right? Mm -hmm. There is not even an inflation um, uh, uh, thing in, in any of it. Is there, Gail? Is that well true? Mm. maybe some of the service stuff or maybe the yeah that we yeah, uh, well there's there, there's we're we're we'd see it with um materials yeah, um, okay. you know For we sure. did a great thing by front loading but we don't know what other materials that we but beyond what we've front loaded and bought early that we may need to buy um yeah. and then um uh yes well services will we see an increase in that um no because they're they're fixed rates in our in our contract. Yeah. So um, the the only place we could see it is if Massachusetts does something like um, increase the um, uh, uh, con whatever I forget what it's called the, 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 the minimum wage allowance or whatever that we have to adhere to. Oh, so if yeah. they raised those, that could be a big budget item by yeah. kicking our labor fees for maintenance up. Good point. Um, so, so that that is a possibility. Is that um, prevailing wage. Gail? Thank you, thank you. Yeah. That word. That word. Does does that apply to um, our service contract? Yeah, it does. Yes, yeah, yeah. We, we 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 yeah, we have to. We have to. Um, try why I got in trouble. Try why I got fined sixty thousand dollars for not doing it. Yeah, I knew, but that was on the construction as opposed to the service. That was why I. Yeah, both. No. So, um, so yeah, I, I agree, Jim, you know, uh, bad stuff could happen, but, uh, 
that uh, you know we we we're it's not our job to uh and, and you know it's the old thing if everyone thinks we're going to go to war then we go to war so it's better not to sort of say you know <laughs> it's better not to set expectations for uh things because uh, expectations um fulfilled. well i i think the more important reason though is the fact that this is a transition and let's just see i mean there's so many things that could go right and go wrong in uh yes beginning uh august 1st i i think just we ought to just give it a little bit of time before we before we go into this that i i think maybe i'm being too conservative here but i i i I would favor just delaying it, just to wait until things settle out, and then, and then apply the reduction. Yeah. We have, so, we so have Jim, great, yeah, yeah. we Another, have great reason for believing Shell will do this because they're because they're good at what they're doing, and mm -hmm. HGE are good at what they're doing. So, you know, yeah, that's transition. Um, and you, Gail, I guess you know more about the transition than I do. Yeah, I'll, I'll go over the transition plan. You can, and this might help allay some of your concerns. And Jim, I do agree with you that it is a, this is a big transition. It 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 is. Um, I am uh, I'm a little bit overwhelmed right now of all the all the things that need to happen for it. Sheldon uh, HGE are being you know great about it, as is Crocker. Um, you know we're all meeting weekly and working as a team to make sure this happens. Um, if something does go wrong in this transition, I think the important thing to remember, Jim, is that it's not going to cost us any money. So even mm -hmm. though things could go wrong, it's not going to be a, a monetary hit to us unless it's combined with something else like a weather event, which has nothing to do with a transition per se. So, um, you know, the, I, I, I'm not worried about um, mixing our reduction um, with the transition because they're, I, they're, it's, uh, the transition is not going to affect that. Um, and one reason I think too, combine them together and, and time them this way is it will help uh, people, our, our, it would help our customers um, uh, see that the transition is a good thing. It's Our goal is to make it largely invisible to everybody and as well, get better service and um, see when that transition happens. Wow, look at this, my bill has gone down. Now, I realize that it has nothing to do with the, you know, with a new provider. It's all about our paid off debt service, but it's all about kind of marketing perception here. Um, it's a, it's a way to make customers really happy of like, wow, the MLP made this decision and to switch and we no longer have Crocker and now it's branded as Shootsbury net and my costs are going down by $10 a month. Um, so that's why I want to time these together, the transition along with a rate reduction. Um, and in terms of how, like how much it's going to be. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's the important discussion we need to have. How much um, are, are we going to lower this by? Um, I, um, I want to do a slightly less reduction because of unknown future costs that we're dealing with um, in terms of the managed routers, that could be adding $1.50 to $2 per subscriber. Um, and also some unknowns about materials and, and labor going forward. Um, we're pretty protected because we have a great contract, but there's things that may end up costing more in the next three years. And what I'm trying to avoid is make of like celebrating this big cost reduction now only to say, oh folks, it's going back up in it next year. You know, Craig? So regarding the, the managed router transition, the idea is that some people may be transitioning to the managed router, but most people are not going to, right? We don't know. Like this is a decision that we're gonna be making um, maybe in very soon in the next year of offering these managed routers as a higher performing, um, stronger signal, you know, faster router for people who want it. Um, okay, and I realize we could also say, 
this is going to tack a dollar fifty onto your bill if it's you choose to do that. But in. only the people who opt in will be paying the, the monthly charge, correct? Uh, we we don't know that. And I believe they can manage. Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, Shell said that that we could have just a bunch of people opt in and not have everyone. But I believe, and I didn't get an answer on my final question to Bobby uh, uh, as well, uh, that um, can the managed can the managed cloud wrap manage router thing work with uh, with any router? Um, uh, you don't think so? Uh, oh, sorry, you shook your head, Craig. But right. I think it can. Do you think it can't? The router has to be manageable. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. The, well, I, I didn't get an answer yet. So um, I, I just suspected that it uh, that it might be, but I didn't know. I don't know the answer to that. So if it is, then that if it is, then I would suggest that we plan, that we discuss, that we look at what, what wonderful things that might do. Like I said, uh, I was blown away. I was blown away by, you know, how clever um, stuff can get now and uh, and how wonderful for a dollar fifty extra, the potential, and, and maybe it's only with Gigaspire, but the potential to um, for them to be able to just sort of say, well, yeah, your printer is, is offline because you've got the wrong name on it or something like that. It's like, you know, it's, it's like it, it just it is so elegant what he could look at and just sort of say, you know, the, the little things on my network that would be flashing on his screen as he's looking at it from, you know, wherever he is. And uh, so, um, yeah, so you're probably right. Craig, um, it probably does require the special um, thing, but I think we should head there. And and I I think that that's um, uh, and and uh, and it it does it does meet a little bit of your uh, your concern, Jim. That that you know if we don't yeah, if we if we kept it to a forty dollar uh, 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 MLP monthly, then um, then we'd have a little buffer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's good, Jim. And then Steve. Is this um, managed router that you're obviously like Graham <laughs> very much? I'm less. I find that I, 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 I anyway. I I won't get into a discussion about whether it's a good idea or not. But is is a shell willing to apply this um, managed router, a flexible managed router fee uh, fee to? To some Shootsbury um, subscribers who buy it, in other words, you know, so so, so some people are getting Correct. bills. Yes, yes, yes. We 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 can do that, um, we, but that's a much larger discussion about how we would roll out these U sixes. What would be the options to customers? Yeah. Are we paying the managed router fee? Is it a customer choice? So it's just it's it's a um, it's a big discussion that we can't have right now, and that's why I want to build in the buffer. Um, so yeah. that when we do have it, we're not locked out of this option. But Steve? Okay, a couple things about um, financial cushions. I mentioned a couple here, but several other things to consider. <clears throat> we have a $73,000 retained earnings from FY21 is going into our emergency reserve fund next year. Um, that's three in the, in the uh, warrant. I'm also projecting, unless we get some really unexpected expenses in the next six weeks, I'm projecting over $50,000 of retained earnings for this year that we will, by October, we will have access to. So I'm seeing we've got a really good cushion here going forward. Um, as well as the cushions that are in the actual operating budget. Right. I um, also want to say that the warrant has been published. It is out there. And the warrant has, Article 4 has our budget in it. Oh. And when you get down to the, the bottom of our budget, it shows oh. Monthly fee thirty eight dollars. This is what the the finance committee and the select board voted to approve. This is what is in print. This is what people are going to pick up at town meeting, or may have have it's online. 
They're encouraging people to print it themselves before town meeting. There'll be copies at town meeting. People pick up the thing to say, okay, Article 4, vote in the uh, operating budget of 346560 for the MLP, which includes, you know, my MLP monthly fee of $38. And then I'm going to say, well, it's not really 38. We're going to make it 40. And so the um, total budget will be uh, two dollars times uh, 760 times 12. It'll be you know so many thousand dollars more. Uh, we're going to have to actually because it's a higher figure. I think legally, we would have to recalculate that and ask for an amendment to Article Four to have the higher total budget that's being voted in. And I'm questioning: Do we do we want to do that? Yeah, bummer. Okay, I, I missed that. I, I I wasn't expecting our MLP to actually fee to be published. Um, yeah. You it's, know, it's, well, just look at look at the uh, warrant. It's our oh no no I I understand it's there it's done it's 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 done it's fine. Um, but even even if that thirty eight dollar fee were not published, if we go to a different fee, then our total budget is different. In other words, we've, we're asking the town to appropriate a budget of $346,560 for the, for the um, MLP, even for the enterprise fund, even though it's not coming out of town funds, part of the state law for enterprise funds is the town meeting has to appropriate that total amount. That, okay. that well, amount I, I, is calculated yeah. by taking the user fee times uh, 12 times a figure that we put in. And I put the figure of 760 in, which is a conservative figure or 769. So we yeah. know it's gonna run higher than that, but we've, we put this in print, at, here's the figure. So- um, Good, let's go with that then. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think actually that published. answers it. We, we just need to stop talking about it now because yeah. it's, it's published, it's out there. It's, um, I, I don't think that we can, uh, I, I didn't realize this right now. So um, yeah, okay. let's, let's move on. Let's move yeah, on. We'll, it's, we'll, it's, we'll work with it. If we have, if we have to yet. raise rates next year, we'll have to raise rates. Um, and and uh, it will be at a point that, um, you know, people will, will um, you know, just deal with it. Hopefully we can add some of our reserves maybe to make that stepwise raise less, you know, if, if we need to. So uh, let's move on. Yeah. I wish, I wish we hadn't gone down this $38 road. Uh, you know, we, we didn't discuss this before. Yes, uh, oh, yeah, we, we did. We did. I remember this. 38? 38? I, I don't yeah. remember this. Uh, I remember it. Oh. Yeah, we did. We did discuss it. We just we we didn't really, um, I think, make it make it an official vote at the last one. We did go over this budget and debt before the last finance committee meeting before we met the with February them. meeting. Yeah. It was part of the yeah. budget. Totally. It, it, it's yeah. been that part of the budget all along, because if you change the rate, what it does is change the um, emergency reserve line item. It's, it's a spreadsheet I've made that does that. <laughs> I remember it was well discussed, and and yeah, we 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 it's it's yeah, it's it's good. Uh, we've we've solved our problem, of, of, uh, and we we have. If we wanted to go to Gigaspire, then we would use. I would suggest we could use some of our, um, our reserve capital for equipment because this would be, this would be a cat that we could. We could subsidize everybody's giga spy. Who wanted yeah. the moment? So. Yeah, there's um I, I just did out the math. It's less like say every single one of the 760 customers got the giga spire at a dollar fifty per month. That's less than fourteen thousand dollars per year. Yeah. So um, you know, we can we can work with that. The other thing is letting the people who want it pay for that. Yeah. People who don't want it don't have to pay for it. We still have options. Um, again, like I said, let's let's move on in the future. Um, let's make sure that our discussions about what the MLP fee is is going to be is like we're all on board with it before our our budget goes to goes to press. Um, and um, yeah, so Steve, um, you know, we can announce on. I know you have a, a spiel that you've. Um, 
figured out, which I think is a good a good plan. Just kind of giving the background about explaining to the townspeople why are, why are we voting on this budget. The big takeaway point that we need to get across to them is this does not pay taxes. This no no tax raise. It's all it's all revenue based, and point out to them that this big lowering means that their bill is going to be um, about sixty dollars a month plus taxes and fees for internet. The, the, the easiest way to say it will be how much it goes down by because, because yeah, that's, you're, you're that's right. You're, right. you're right. Well, yeah. Why, why yeah. don't you just say it? It'll Everyone's going to have to do math in yes, their head. Yes. And Across the board, $15 a month for the bill you receive in Perfect. Receive Perfect. In people, people understand that. Yeah. And, and, and can I, can I, uh, as I, uh, Craig, your turn. Oh, no, that's fine. I, I don't say your thing first because mine is. Oh, yeah. And that is, you know, I remember vividly and a lot of people will remember that we we voted if, at a town meeting to, to, to borrow money. Let's be very clear. Let's tell them that 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 the, the, the MLP income is paying down all of the debt, that there is hardly yeah. any money that 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 came out of taxing because that is that is something that most people even I as you know I've watched it all happen and I I, I keep on you know it's I always marvel that we're paying the debt off with subscriber income so thank you for Craig oh I'm just thinking next door so you all, you're involved in following the controversy about the school roof someone's going to say. That savings is about the amount that the, the taxes are going to go up for the library. So this was all a, a scheme by the... This is all a ruse. <laughs> on the, on the yep, yep. I, I, fully ex I fully expect this is going to happen. <laughs> yes, yes, so yes. The, cool. Yep, and, and there's, no, there's, there's nothing... There's yeah, nothing... I know. I yeah, know. there's nothing we can do. We're just... It, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. People are, you know, and I, you know, so, here's somebody else. Someone else is going to point out that us putting putting the order of the articles in the warrant. Oh was, yeah, that's already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that that's our that's already in there. So anyway, it's gonna happen. People are gonna make their own opinions. Have a tough skin. We're gonna move on. <laughs> I'll, I'll totally low. Yeah. Jim. Um a question which is somewhat related. Um not long ago, uh, Crocker was able to knock a fee, you know, off, off of those fees that we have to pay every month to the government or whatever. I, I don't remember specifically which one it was, but it made a significant difference in the bill because, well, what was it? There was, there was a we were, fee. We were getting, I'm pretty sure we were getting taxed inappropriately yeah, yeah, for, we're for, in, for yeah. internet, which is not a taxable thing on the federal level it, or something. Okay. It, it was the state, phone. it was the Massachusetts sales tax. Um, I've, I've got the email somewhere because I actually, when I got my own bill, I found, hmm, why did this go down? And I emailed, uh, um, Kathy Whitney and asked her and, and they, Crocker had hired a contracted with some tax advice company as to what services, uh, they provide are subject to the Massachusetts sales tax and which were not. And, um, they got bad advice from somebody. So, so, good job. So, good job. So, so we won't have to face the same situation with Shell. Uh, and no, no, words, that's, that's they, been worked out. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We good. And, and Shell um, is, I assume, intimately familiar with tax rules and charging because they're public utilities in Massachusetts. So they will understand all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to move on to the manager report. Um, earlier, we had made note of the outage that happened from uh, late at night on April 27th, going into early morning hours on the 28th. Um, so what happened was um, the building in Shootsbury, uh, Shootsbury, in Springfield um, that uh, holds Crocker equipment had a power issue. The problem was it was not a um, outside building utility problem. It was in the building um, only. So 
electricity was still coming in. So the generator didn't kick on. That was a backup system. Um, Crocker saw the alarms. It was kind of a normal thing. It, and they ignored it because they always did. And it was a configuration problem. They have corrected that. So if this happens again, um, uh, they'll be notified sooner. After 11 hours of it alarming, um, the uh, battery backup just ran out. And that's when the calls started to come in of loss of service. So they're also getting more robust power back up there. They're going to double that capacity for 24 hours. Um, and like I said, they've already fixed the configuration issue that um, prevented them from getting the alarm appropriately. So anyway, it's um, uh, they fixed it. It's not going to be really applicable to us in a couple of months. Um, but it was, it's good that they've addressed it in the short term by fixing that configuration. So if something like this happens again, um, they'll be alerted to it sooner. Uh, uh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, HG&E also has facilities at that same address. It, 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 was, Crocker, it was Crocker's yeah. UPS stuff that screwed up. Um, ah. And and, um, and the, the it was particular to their battery system. They have these big battery systems that ran for eleven hours. They didn't know that it wasn't working properly because they hadn't configured it properly. And but, but I'm thinking it was the power so the the. Well, they power set a source. power bump, but but you know it's it's yeah there there are bumps. This is why they have big battery things. When it, when something really bumps off, then yeah. So it, it was their, their explanation wasn't very wasn't something we have to worry about the whole building, because that that whole building UMass has their stuff in there too. There's not a there's not a there's not a power bump glitchy problem with the whole place. It was okay. Their, Just, it was you know, their, it seemed their like a reasonable thing to their guys configuration. Sure. Their configuration. Make sure HGE uh, doesn't have any power problems in that building. Yeah, no one has any problem. They're, people who have configuration problems have power problems. So okay. Yeah. All right. Um, you. I hope you all got my. Um, Gmail invite um, about our big tour day scheduled for June 28th. That's Tuesday. Um, all of you indicated you could you could make that day. So we're scheduled, we're locked in. Uh, Steve, thanks for that suggestion about combining the afternoon with an Holyoke gas and electric uh, tour. It was a great idea. That and they're, they're all for it. What's that, what, Craig? What was the date again? Sorry, I was- Sorry, no problem. June 28th, that's a Tuesday. Yep. Um, so the agenda is we'll do a 1030 and, and don't worry about keeping this in, in your, your head. I'll, I'll certainly be sending out better details when we get closer, but about a 1030 arrival at Sheld. We'll do some introductions. We'll tour the Sheld facility till noon. Uh, we'll do lunch from noon till about 115. We'll transition over to um, uh, the uh, HGNE Network Operations Center at One Canal Street. Um, which is just two minutes down the road. Um, and then from about 1.30 to 2.30, we'll do a, an on-site tour plus a virtual tour of their other sites. Um, they have, um, they, they said they could set us up in a conference room with big screens and, and get a virtual tour of the places we're not looking at in Springfield at that time. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, we'll try to wrap everything up around 3 p.m. So basically, you know, that whole chunk of the day, please reserve it on your calendar. We'll send out better timing and, and more details when we get closer. Um, but uh, I was glad we could find a date that worked for just about everybody, everyone on our team and almost everyone on their teams. Right. Yep. Let's see, town meeting. So we talked a little about about, about what Steve's going to say. Steve, I'll, I'll, um, I'll walk up there with you. And so we can both, um, you know, wave to the crowd. Um, what, be sure to introduce yourself, introduce me in case we both speak. And um, I'll let you do most of the talking unless there's a question directed at me. Um, let's see, Jim, um, 
how are we doing on Wi-Fi coverage? This is going to be a very well attended meeting. I, I think we mm -hmm. should plan for about 300. Well, um, I have the same two routers that were used last year. I just checked them out a few days ago to be sure they were all set up properly. They're set up exactly the same as they were last year and haven't been used since last year. So Great. Um, they're sitting right beside me here as I type away. And uh, that's what uh, Graham and I will be setting up uh, shortly, a little bit after uh, eight o'clock on uh, this coming Saturday. Great. And what's, and the password is still password capital Password P, is Lord. password. And it's, um, it, it, it's um, town meeting one, two, three, and four. There are sort of four, four, four choices that a, a, um, a um, town meeting attendee can choose. Okay. And, um, and what I think the... Jim found that uh, 155 uh, people yeah. can log into each yeah. one. So 310. Yeah. We... Uh, but, and everyone doesn't log in. So, you know, yeah. 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 So if, if they get a message that it's full or they're unable to log in, just try a different one. Right. Yeah. In other words, because town yeah. hall, town hall guests will still. Work. Yeah. 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 Uh, two and four are the high speed connections and one and three are the low ones are, are the. Um... Okay. Are the slower ones, but not that that makes a lot of difference. But All right, you said 155 on each. 155 is the maximum that the um, Linksys routers are able to connect with. That's what they, you know, that's what they're set to essentially. Great, and I'm sorry. Did you say the the password with password with a capital P or lowercase? No, a lower uh, lowercase. All lowercase password. Okay. Um. Great. Um, I need to find some poster board somewhere around here and I'll, I'll put that on the podium again. Okay. Um, yeah, that'd be good. Yep. Um, so and Steve, Jim, whatever time you want me to come, um, I'll, uh, I'll come when you want to get there. So you, you can tell me. I, I'm going to get there at, um, 7 45, oh, <laughs> okay. uh, 7 45 to 7:55 because there's uh, so much well, to, I'll definitely be there. We by have to o'clock. vote and do all those things beforehand. You bet. Okay. I'll, and then this FinCom stuff, you know. Yeah, I'll be there I'll at sit, a.m. Sit there and um, happily exist uh, <laughs> with <laughs> seven of us, or somewhat unhappily exist, I guess you'd have to say. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, great. Everything you just told me about town meeting one, two, three, four, 155 people on each, password, all of that. Um, I'll put it on some poster board that can go on the podium. And I'll also type up a little thing that Paul can read our moderator at the mm -hmm. beginning of the meeting um, and just have last year, I remember people kept asking like, what's going on with the Wi-Fi?" And Paul didn't like, I'll just give him something to read. <laughs> I think it was a year before. I don't remember a problem last year. I, I'm, and No, I don't think we had a problem. Yeah. Um, I'm sure yeah, it, was it, was, it was, it was one, it was one, yeah, it was, it was one year that we just had trouble like communicating, like this is available people and here's what to do. So yeah. anyway, it, yeah. I'll just make it, there's going to be enough to talk about. We want to make this part as easy as possible. Yeah. Don't, don't tell them 155. They'll get to that. That's more information. Yeah, yeah, you're you're I, right. I, you're, you're right. Just I, that you, I'll say something like yeah. each one has a capacity. If it's full, just right, move on yeah. to the next one. Yeah. That, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, one order of business that we need to take care of is reappointing um, all of you, if you so choose, I assume you choose as broadband committee members and reappointing me as an MLP manager, assuming you want me to continue. Yes, Steve. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> yes, you, I know you're voting. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's the select board that would appoint the members of the MLP committee. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, you're absolutely right. We need to recommend to the select board, ah, please reappoint. Okay. Yeah, yeah, ah, okay. it's not, we're voting. We need, I need to go, I need to tell the select board, hey, please vote at your next thing to reappoint. So okay. um, uh, all if, of you want to- If we're available, that's, uh, so we're available, I'm available. There you are, that, that's what they okay. want to know. Uh, all right. Are you all available if the select board wants to reappoint you? Available. Yeah. Available. Yeah. Or, 
Okay. You know, cool. pr provided I'm voted in, of course, I'm the only candidate. Oh, but, yeah, you could be. In no, 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 this, this yeah. is separate. Wait, no, no, this <laughs> is separate. This is a separate thing. This is, this, is, this is the select board appointing as a broadband committee. So it's not the election, Jim. That's something completely separate right, of right. you being elected. Like, like me, you can be unelected, but still be on the. Board. Yes, yes. And like me, I'm unelected as well. Not elected. So what do we have to re recommend? Run that by me again, because I'm just yeah. typing so, something. So out. the um, all current members seek reappointment from the select board. And I will let them know this. OK. Um, And then the next sort of business is that I need all of you to reappoint me as the MLP manager because my term expires on 6.30 if you'd like me to continue. So um, if one of you wants to make a motion to reappoint. Um, I, and then I move that that Gail, that we recommend once again to the select board. No, to, no, this, no, this is, no, this one is our board vote. Cool, okay. It's I, so confusing, I, I'm sorry. I, okay, <laughs> I, move, I move that uh, that we vote to, uh, to reappoint uh, Gail as the manager of the MLP. Second. For, for another 12 months. Yeah, 12 years, didn't you say, Graham? For another 12 months? Is, it's a 12, 12 month. years, didn't you say? Uh, 12 years, yes, for another 12 years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be wrong. Yep. Um, all in favor? We'll do a voice vote on this because it's official. Um, Hemingway? A aye. Sefton? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Great, thank you. Okay, um, anything else that anybody wants to discuss before I go into describing the details of our transition plan? Just one one thing that I would say before you put your, when you get your Gigaspy thing and you install it, uh, before you do that, just walk out uh, to the limit of where you uh, Wi-Fi call your landline or Wi-Fi call whoever you live with if you can um, and and then walk away from the house and see where it drops out and you'd be able to do that even with a voicemail if you've got a landline voicemail you'd be able to tell when it drops and then go back about 10 feet toward the house and um, or you know 20 feet and see with our Linksys where where is the point roughly that you can Create that you can uh, do a Wi-Fi calling from outside, and and this will give you some sense of the peripher perimeter of Wi-Fi calling for Linksys. And then um, I found that uh, that Wi-Fi calling that it seemed to have doubled the size for my house. Now everyone's router is in a different place in their house, and their characteristics are all different. But it's an interesting experiment to do the same test later when you have a Linksys router. Um, to, um, oh, sorry, when you have a Gigaspire router to see if Wi-Fi calling, because, because one of the big problems people have is Wi-Fi calling, and it's just nice to have a more robust Wi-Fi calling experience within your own house. That's fine. Oh, yeah, I'm done. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how these, these perform. Yeah. I have to say, I have not been overly thrilled with the Linksys Wi-Fi calling. No. It's been... Okay, mediocre. Yeah. You guys may not know this, but I have multiple. I have an, a router and access points, and if I move around the house and switch between them, I often lose Wi-Fi calling. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, that's cool because you will have the mesh. You you'll have the mesh thing with this. Oh, and one well, last thing about that. I have that with Linksys, but it's just not. Yeah, working. I know you do, but this will test. This will test whether you can do it with the with the Gigaspire meshing. Um, right. that it meshes better and the one thing too and uh, maybe I'll try and remember to, I, I'll put on the boxes one and two because you've got to get the U6 talking as, as your router before you plug in the, the mesh unit otherwise the mesh unit will try and be your router right. so you've got to get the you've got to get your main guy up first uh, I'll, uh, I'll put one and two to remind you unit one unit two okay so all done Oh, all done. Why is it holding it? <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Okay, uh, I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> okay, so we've been um, uh, working really hard to uh, get this transition um, off the ground. Um, I'm really pleased with the progress that we've made so far. Um, this is our master shared Google spreadsheet um, that I and everyone at Shelled has access to. So you'll notice all these tabs at the bottom, um, kind of um, putting each transition task into a silo. Um, and um, this, is, this first one is just kind of our general catch-all um, uh, list. Um, and this is the one that I'm, I'm really focusing on is our customer transition tasks, doing things like building a new informational website about the transition, um, drafting the initial email that Crocker is going to send out to our customers to tell them about uh, this changeover and do a soft uh, kind of trust handoff saying something like in the coming months, um, more information about this is going to be coming from shelled from this email address. Um, and the tasks that each customer needs to do, this is the only part that's not invisible for this transition, is setting up uh, new billing, um, checking off a yes for a, 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 a customer service agreement. And after the switch takes place, setting up their voicemail again, if they have phone. So other than that, every, everything is kind of being taken care of behind the scenes. Um, and we, you know, for if you're an internet customer, all you have to do is set up a new billing um, address with, or, or billing information rather with Shelled. Um, let's see, so the date that we're trying to aim for is July 27th. This is purposefully a couple of days before our contract with Crocker technically ends so that they're still contractually obligated to be around and help us. So far, they've been great. I'm not concerned about this, um, but it just makes me feel better that they're still contractually obligated throughout the, the transition. Um, let's see, the phone number. Um, is is transferable. So the support number, I, I don't know if you remember, but I'm really glad that we made that phone number that we're getting transferable. The little stickers that we put on everyone's ONT for tech support does not change. So it'll just be rerouted to shelled um, uh, after a, on the switch date. Um, another thing that we're doing to help customers is we will have on-site help desk either at the library or the town hall on the days following the switch in case anyone has a big problem. Again, this should all be seamless. Um, it, it, for, especially for internet, there's nothing that's gonna happen that's gonna break anyone's equipment or make them you know, change passwords or anything like that. Um, mostly I'm anticipating people may need help with phone. So we're gonna have on-site um, a technician but also a customer service person from Sheld to just answer any billing or other questions folks have. And um, I'm gonna have a, a truck just rolled and available with that technician. So if there's somebody who just like, I just can't get my voicemail set up, they'll just drive to that house and, and set them up. Um, so um, in addition to 24 seven phone and email support, um, we're gonna have a couple hours, well, I guess more than a couple, like basically two half days of on-site support as needed. Um, I know it's it's a it's an expense, but in, it's a small one um, to keep our customer base happy. The the on-site tech support will be at the town hall. Uh, to to be determined. To be determined. I I, I you know it depends on like. Here in Shrewsbury. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just say here in here in Shrewsbury. Gail, do you know uh, people like Steve um, who have Crocker email, and you weren't being billed for Crocker um, 
uh, at Crocker email uh, when when you're when you're um, when yeah they when, will they will be charged. Okay, so so they'll get you'll just get it. They'll just get a different bill. Uh, they they won't be dropped. No, as, no, no, no. They won't be dropped, but they they will be billed separately by Crocker. Um, okay. Very very few customers um, got an email with Crocker. You know, yeah. and so I know Steve's pre even predates our, uh, you know, our, our network. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. It was, I, I have that because it was, they were my dial up provider. Yeah. yeah. And then it switched to, um, to a, a Verizon hotspot to a HughesNet satellite dish. It, it, but it stayed the same thing. And I've given that address to more and more people. So, yeah, it's, I'm not, I'm not concerned with the transition at all. Yeah. Someone else asked me and I told them to talk to Crocker, but I just wanted to make sure that, that, yeah, that, that when they shut off the billing, that, that uh, yeah, I figured, I figured they, Crocker would know how to do that. Yeah. Um, you know what, let me um, make a little note on Tim's list here. Um, about this. Um, I should probably put something on our FAQ page about it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea because because um, yeah, someone you don't need gonna... to remind you don't need to remind them that <laughs> they need to send me a bill. <laughs> yeah, but they won't be shut off. That that's that was yeah. their biggest concern. Yeah, but but yeah, no. How about the uh, the um, the are uh, the the voice, uh, you know, the voice, you know, a telephone, you know, the, the <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do the typing and, and, mm -hmm. and then think it's at the all same right. Take, time. take your time. <laughs> um, um, the voicemail and things like this, how do, uh, uh, are the voice, you know, the, the voice response to um, you know, phone messages and stuff like that, that's, that seems to me the most the 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 trickiest part to the whole indeed process. indeed it is the trickiest part and the, the part that makes it the trickiest is that there's nothing that we can do to front load that right i can't mm -hmm. i can't tell them great go and set up your voicemail now so that it's all ready on the 27th nope they it can't they can't do it until the 27th so the messaging that I'm going to be sending out through Shell is something to the effect of um, mark your calendar to take these steps to set up your voicemail on the 27th. You can't do it in advance. Um, here's what to do if you have trouble and do a very clear step by step of, okay, of, right. of what, what they should do and also have that posted on our support pages. And you know we'll have 24 seven tech support available. Unlike the support that Crocker has offered, we will have actual 24 seven tech support. You can call it three in the morning and you'll reach technicians that can actually support you. Not, mm -hmm. not a callback. So okay. I'm um, looking forward to this aspect of it. Um, oh. Another question, Jim? No, 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 no. That's, okay. that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Um, let's see. So I've been working with, um, Lee and Bobby, uh, this well about, um, how to get an integrity. They're their 24 seven subcontractor support vendor, how to get them trained, um, for us specifically. So they're working through the Linksys router manual. I sent them our manual for the UPSs, the, the battery packs. Um, and they're already familiar with the Calyx gear, so the ONTs. Um, so how to, how to diagnose and fix issues remotely, and also our policy about a truck roll of when they kind of cut the customer off and say, well, that's internal home equipment. We don't roll a truck for that. Um, so let's see. Oh, here's something. Um, to ensure that this all goes smoothly and we have a great process to transfer the customers, um, I've chosen about 24 people in town. All of you are included on this list to be, um, we're calling it the friendly switch. 
of, of just people who are friendly to us and our cause. Most of these are actually town officials and also people from our, our, our volunteer list, all those great people who went out and counted utility poles for us. Um, I, I'm going back to them again and saying, we need your help again. Um, the ask is for them to, and all of you to basically switch early. Um, so sometime in early July, just all you'll do is you'll go through the process of this switch. You'll get early emails from Shell, the same emails that are going to go out to everybody else, just get them earlier. Um, and we'll switch you over to Shell services um, probably a week or two before everybody else. The purpose of this is to, is to kind of smoke test our process. Where do people get tripped up? Where are directions unclear? Where are the problems that happen so that when we do the whole town, we'll have already identified those and fix them. Um, so there's nothing you need to do about this. You'll get an email from me in early June asking if you're willing to participate. And basically the ask is, are you willing to switch early? Um, it's not gonna save you any money. It's not gonna cost you any money early. You're just gonna do it before other customers. Um, and then the third part is providing me feedback about how the process was. Um, were the directions clear? Did you get tripped up? Um, what, what didn't work? Uh, what do you want differently so that we can implement those improvements when the rest of the town switches in a couple of weeks? Gail, you're not taking any chance in being in this group? Just kidding. <laughs> well, I can't. No. Yeah, I, know. I, I I can. I don't I don't have a home anymore. Right. So. That's a good that's a good reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't worry. I'll I'll learn plenty about it during the switch. Yeah, yeah we we'll all tell you, don't worry. Yes, don't worry. That's that's the whole point. I'll be collecting the data from all of you about how how it went. Yeah. Um all right. Um so I've been imp really impressed so far with um, Holio Gas and Electric. Um, I, I just, you know, a lot of these technical things, it's not my forte. I don't, I don't know how to handle the technical parts, but they're just like, here's, here's a, here's a example of what they've been doing to set up, like pre-set up our phone um, and just knocking off the tasks, um, getting us ready. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what this is. Finalized 1500 main Cisco 4331 configuration. <laughs> well, 1500 main is it, it, one of the uh, internet hotel locations. In yeah. Yeah. So. Gail, are you able to share the, um, uh, share this page with uh, anyone you want like us? I, um, uh, I want to give you, let me look at that again. Um, right now it's kind of completely open for the shell team. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to give you read access, but not edit access. You're yeah, certainly read. welcome to give me comments. Oh. I just don't want you to accidentally delete stuff. Not only only would want, would only want read access. Wouldn't yeah. want to miss, wouldn't want to mess with anyone else's program. Yep. So let me put this on my task list to get you access. So it, if you want, you can keep track of how we're doing. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. Um, all right, and Steve, I am working on the financial back office transition things um, too. It's just lame right now because um, we haven't gotten very far with that, but that's fine. We have, we have plenty of time to do that. Um, you know, I think this, this is the um, Crocker's list um, I, I had to separate it out because some of the stuff on the um, shelled list is proprietary that they didn't want Crocker to know. So um, Crocker's list is separate here. Um, and why did I want to show this to you? Oh, Steve, um, I got an agreement that what we'll be getting from Crocker um, is um, we'll get a final customer report on August 15th from Crocker. And around that time, also our final remittance of payments for the MLP fees that they collected in for July. Okay. Um, and then October, by October 1st, um, we will both work together to do kind of a final true up um, okay. for any outstanding repairs. And, and they agreed that they could do that 
totally complete by, you know, with all their vendors, repairs, whatever, by October 1st. Um, so I know that actually I'll be tracking this, but I just wanted to let you know, I am mm -hmm. planning on, on kind of what the closeout of our accounts with Crocker is going to look like. Um, and, but I mean, Shell, I assume will be billing in July for service effective August 1st. Uh, unknown yet. Um, that's something that I need to talk to their business office about of like, are you going to start like, um, are you going to start billing in July or is it going to be an August 1st, first bill date? That's what I'm kind of moving for is for, is for them to do an August 1st bill date, um, for services in August. So it's not quite such a big lag time is what we had with Crocker and it's more current. And also they don't get double billed in a month. So anyway, I'll work that out with them. Well, no, it. Huh. Yeah. No, I, I was going to the last the last bill that Crocker sends should be the one that's going out early June, just in a couple of weeks, because that's Crocker bills ahead. Oh, the July so, first. July first is when they bill. Well, no, they they send their bill out. Usually, uh, the the bills follow about fifteen. 15, the, uh, the, the actual physical bill follows about 10 days after they actually bill your credit card, which is on the on the first day of the month. Mm, that's but, not, but, but Jim, it's pre, if you look, it's preceding, because I actually get paper bills from them. Yeah, so do I, yeah. What, and, yeah. And the bill, but the bill that will be coming out from Crocker in June, will be the bill is due July 1st for July service. I think you're correct, yes. So the last bill that Crocker sends should be the bill they're sending out just you know, early in- Just now, yeah. All I right, mean, well- Because Crocker was sending the bills out kind of late in the month and people complained that they weren't getting enough lead time to make the right. payment. So Crocker says, fine, we'll send the bill earlier. They're not delaying the date it's due. Oh. So, so their bills come out fairly early in a month, due the first of the following month for service that following month, because they are billing ahead. They, Crocker says the due date is the first of the month for that full month. So, um, so, so when is Crocker going to hit our uh, credit card? Um, for the last time, will it be May first, June first? Uh, July when? should be July first. Yeah, July it 1st. should. It should. It should be. It should be July. Um, and let yeah, just let me talk to Sheld about what their billing cycle is. It may be the same. It may be different about when they're sending these out, mm -hmm. when they um, expect it to be remitted. Um, and also, I'm going to make a note to myself that we should maybe include a little letter. Um, in the in the first bill saying like welcome to your new service provider go here to learn more information Just so the, I, so the first the first so the first uh, shell bill will will arrive sometime in early August is oh, what don't, don't know yet I don't know. Should, to, to be to be it determined should be, I would expect it would be in July do August 1st that would make sense for service month of august yeah that would make sense because otherwise people won't have time to to send it in and whatever know about it yeah. um and i'm also assuming this bill is going to be a bill from very net not yep. from shell yep yep it'll be white labeled but, it, but it'll probably have a mailing address of a, you know, a PO box in South Hadley, I'm guessing, although we don't. Also, also to be determined. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, it also could be Texas. I, I don't yeah. know how they do their billing. Yeah. Right. But we could ask them to keep it on the same cycle as what it already is, right? That, that they probably could manage that if we, if we told them, you know, right now that everyone gets their bill for the next month um, early and, um, you know, was midway. It's, it's, it's just the end of the second week or something of a month for next month. So 
Um, yeah, I, I think I think instead of going with what we've always done, I'm going to ask them what's best for customers and mm -hmm. and see if you know see if we can make whatever we do going forward match that instead. They have far more experience with with this um, about you know what's the best date to to send the bill and what's the best date to um, set the deadline for that. And you know we still do have the 30 day grace period built in. Um, I am going to talk to them about extending that um, a bit during our first two billing cycles. Um, there's going to be people who fall through the cracks and you know don't get around to setting up their billing and um, I don't want their service to be cut off prematurely. No. So um, we'll try to work that in too. But how many people actually, uh, do we have any numbers on how many people actually use their credit card, like I do, for example, to pay for, you know, to pay for the service? Um, is it fifty percent, seventy-five percent? I mean, I, 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 I guess I don't. That's I don't, invisible to us. We don't. We don't know because I. No, and it's it's kind of irrelevant because it's um, it it all depends on who's going to set it up going forward, um, and they'll. You know, we'll encourage people to do that, and I assume yeah. people who do it already will want to do it, and maybe even some new people will say, "Oh yeah, as long as I have to, you know, set up this new billing information, I might as well set it up for auto pay." Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, any questions about the the transition? Any red flags? Anything I've said that is concerning or? Any big pieces you think we're missing here? Gail, I, I would be interested in if you could put me on the read-only access to the whole transition. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if if I if I can figure out how to do that, you all it'll be an all or nothing thing. Okay, okay. good. Um, okay. And yeah. if, if there's no way to to do read-only access, um, um then um you know, I don't think Google has share groups. Anyway, I'll figure some way to get the information uh, to you. It could be something like every two weeks, I download the whole thing and just email it to you, you know, in its current state. Okay. But anyway, I'll figure it out. That'd work. That'd be good. <clears throat> um. All right. Any anything else? So this is a pie in the sky wish list, but since we're going white labeling, ideally all communication with Shell would go through a Shootsbury PO that we could just switch to, to the next vendor. And, and similarly, ideally, when you set up your credit card payment, it would just continue through the next transition to the next uh, vendor. I'm sure neither of these possible but oh. yeah I'm, I'm i'm certain that there's no way we could do transfer credit card information from no, company to company that's a not, that's a no, that's a possibly. nightmare it's probably a federal offense yeah. um but yeah but the, the p.o box could could we do that a, a mailing address hmm that'd be a pain in the butt for them to have to come and collect their checks out of a p.o box here or we'd have to pay to have it forwarded, but then it would get there late. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, that would no, no, that's no good. No, yeah, no. I throw it out there, and then I, 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 I like, I like your thinking. I like the idea, though. I like it. Because <laughs> that's what white labeling is, right? It's most yeah, intense. yeah, right. Everything's in, invisible in in the background. Right. Um, yeah, but there's plenty of bills you pay to a business that don't go where to where the business really is. Is to the point. person okay. they've contracted with that, uh, like our tax bills in in town is you know there's right they got a Woburn or something Woburn mass yes. yeah yeah. Um, yeah and no one worries <laughs> yeah. no but it doesn't change every three years right yeah. but it doesn't matter because they send me an envelope in the in in, in yeah, they just send me an envelope an envelope you know where to send my taxes and oh, I, you mean you're I, talking about the remittance has the correct yeah, address yeah, for and example. Month to month? Yeah, for an example. Oh, yeah. And you know, just it's in the envelope. I don't care. Like, it's Woburn for taxes, like you say. And you know. but it, but in principle, if I'm buying my internet from Shoot Spray Net, things shouldn't change when Shoot Spray Net underneath does a, a 
a change in white label provider, right? That's but Shootsbury <laughs> Net could be changing their billing contractor. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Going, you know, going forward, we can keep the look and feel of our bills the same. Um, you know, with any any vendor could do that. So we can do that. But yeah, I don't I don't think there's a any easy way to keep the address that those go to consistent without lots and lots of hassle. I figured as much, but I thought I'd throw it out there. Yeah. Generation, I don't know. Yeah. Again, I, I like the idea and, and we can do more going forward. You know, I like the fact that our bills are going to come from Shootsbury Net and that people are going to really understand now who is providing their internet. Yeah. Right. That's the important it's, it's thing. Good. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. And uh, it's it's who they pay that who they pay is who they get the internet from. They're going to understand that. Yep. So. All right. Um, I guess that's it. Um, I looking forward to seeing most of you at the at Saturday's meeting and. Um, yeah, I'll we'll see you then. OK, good. Move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> Very good. All right. All right. Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye. See you on Saturday. Bye-bye.